What's going on guys, Bird here, and I've been searching for some ways to learn JavaScript interactively, and I've ran across the, uh, some free courses on Codecademy that we're gonna check out. So we're gonna check out this free beginner friendly, has 11 lessons, learn JavaScript. Um, we're gonna see if it's really free because I've tried some before that weren't really free, um, where we hit a paywall. So we're going to go through this hopefully it's really free there's also some really cool cheat sheets that are free that i will make sure i link in the description but let's go ahead and jump into it welcome to learn javascript a brief overview of what you will learn in this course what you will learn in this course you will learn programming fundamentals with javascript syntax the concepts covered in this course lay the foundation for using javascript in any environment after this course you'll be able to implement javascript data types built-in methods and variables Use conditionals to control the flow of a program in JavaScript. Construct functions and pass data through them. Identify global and block level scopes in JavaScript. Use arrays to store lists of data. Use loops to execute blocks of code multiple times. Use iterator methods to simplify the process of looping over arrays. Use JavaScript ES6 object syntax to model real world items. Learning is social. Whatever you're working on, be sure to connect with the Code Academy community in the forums. Remember to check in with the community regularly, including for things like asking for code reviews on your project work and providing code reviews to others in the projects category, which can help you to reinforce what you've learned. What will you create? Throughout this course, you will be tasked with applying the concepts learned in projects. Here is a preview of some of the projects featured in this course. Um, Kelvin Weather. Let's click on that. All right, so I'm not ready to do that, so I'd like to go back. Hold on a second. View syllabus. Resume course. How did I get here? I guess this is a start. So, um, variables. In programming, a variable is a container for a value. You can think of variables as little containers for information that live in a computer's memory. Information stored in variables such as username, account number, or even personalized greeting can then be found in memory. Variables also provide a way of labeling data with a descriptive name, so our programs can be understood more clearly by the reader and ourselves. In short, variables label and store data in memory. There are only a few things you can do with variables. Create a variable with a descriptive name, store or update information stored in a variable, reference or get information stored in a variable. It is important to distinguish that variables are not values. They contain values and represent them with a name. Observe the diagram with the colored boxes. Each box represents variables. The values are represented by the content and the name is represented with the label. In this lesson, we will cover how to use the var, let, and const keywords to create variables. When you're ready to start, go to the next exercise. Um, so want to quickly review some of the concepts you've been learning, take a look at this materials cheat sheet. That, those are the cheat sheets that I was mentioning before. So next, create a variable var. There were a lot of changes introduced in the ES6 version of JavaScript in 2015. One of the biggest changes was two new keywords, let and const. To create or declare variables prior to the ES6, programmers could only use the var keyword to declare variables. Let's consider the example above. Var, short for variable, is a JavaScript keyword that creates or declares a new variable. My name is the variable's name. Capitalizing in this way is a standard convention in JavaScript called camel casing. In camel casing, you group words into one. The first word is lowercase, then every word that follows will have its first letter uppercase. Example, camel case everything. Case and everything are capitalized. Equal is the assignment operator. It assigns the value Araya to the variable my name. Araya is the value assigned to the variable my name. You can also say that the my name variable is initialized with the value of Araya. After the variable is declared, the string value Araya is printed to the console by referencing the variable name console 
dot log my name. There are a few general rules for naming variables. Variable names cannot start with numbers. Variable names are case sensitive, so my name and my name would be different variables. It is bad practice to create two variables that have the same name using different cases. Variable names cannot be the same as keywords. For a comprehensive list of keywords, check the MDN's keyword documentation. In the next exercises, we will learn why ES6's let and const are the preferred variable keywords by many programmers. Because there is a ton of code written prior to ES6, it's helpful to be familiar with the pre-ES6 var keyword. If you want to learn more about var and the quirks associated with it, check out the MDN var documentation. Declare a variable named favorite food using the var keyword and assign it to the string pizza. Alright, so var my name equals so var favorite food equals pizza declare a variable named number of slices using the var keyword and assign it to the number eight so var num of slices equals eight Declare a variable named num of slices. Num of slices. Uh, should I have done this for each one of these? I think so. Oh, uh, declare a variable named num of slices using the var keyword and assign it to the number eight. Num of slices should be a number value. Expected num of slices to be a number, but found it to be a string. Um, I think we just do that to do just a number. Okay, perfect. Under the num of slices variable, use console.log to print the value to value saved to favorite food. On the following line, use console.log to print the value saved to number of slices. Console.log. Let me go up and uh, take a peek here. Okay, so one needs to be favorite food and the other needs to be num of slices. Uh, I don't know if that's right. That is right. But I feel like I need uh, I feel like I need semicolons after the end. Did they do it? Yes. So why is it running my code if it's supposed to have semicolons? Like, I appreciate that it does it, but I want to know how to do this right. Um, all right, so we did all of those. Now let's move on to the next one. Here are some helpful links. So that's kind of cool. This is a lot to take in. How can I memorize it? You guys can go ahead and click on that if you want to, but I'm going to go to the next one. Create a variable let. As mentioned in the previous exercise, the let keyword was introduced in ES6. The let keyword signals that the variable can be reassigned a different value. Take a look at the example. So let meal equal enchiladas, console.log meal. Meal equals burrito, console.log meal. So the first time it's going to output enchiladas, and then when you change the meal to burrito, it's going to change it to burrito. Another concept that we should be aware of when using let and even var is that we can declare a variable without assigning the variable a value. In such a case, the variable will be automatically initialized with a value of undefined. Let price, console.log price, output undefined. Price equals 350. Console.log price outputs 350. So this is undefined where this is defined. If we don't assign a value, it is automatically has a value of undefined. Okay, create a let variable called change me and set it equal to the Boolean true. Equal to the Boolean true. 
So let uh, change me equals true. I feel like that's wrong. Did you declare a variable name change me using the let keyword and assign change me a value of true? Let meal equal. Let change me equal true. Set it to equal to the boolean true. I'm going to need a hint. Let this variable equal. Oh, I don't need this. Uh, okay. There we go. On the line after change me is declared, set the value of change me to be the boolean false. So change me equals false. To check if change me was reassigned, log the value saved to change me to the console. So console.log change me. Okay, so that was right and it popped up false. Awesome. Um, off to the next one. All right, create a variable const. The const keyword was also introduced in ES6 and is short for the word constant. Just like with var and let, you can store any value in a const variable. The way you declare a const variable and assign, it, assign a value to it follows the same structure as let and var. Take a look at the following example. So const my name, Gilberto. However, a const variable cannot be reassigned because it is constant. If you try to reassign a const variable, you'll get a type error. Constant variables must be assigned a value when declared. If you try to declare a const variable without a value, you'll get a syntax error. If you're trying to decide between which keyword to use, let or const, think about whether you'll need to reassign the variable later on. If you do need to reassign the variable, use let, otherwise use const. Create a constant variable, const, named entree, and set it equal to the string enchiladas. So equals enchiladas. Just to check that you've saved the value of enchiladas to entree, log the value of entree to the console. So console.log entree great let's see what happens if you try to reassign a constant variable entree equals tacos yep and we got an error after you clear this checkpoint if you want to see about other quirk another quirk of const in action open the hint since our program stops running after encountering an error, we need to delete the line of code from the previous step. Now let's test what happens when you try to declare a const variable without a value. So const, let's just add another one, const testing. Missing initial, yep, declaration. You should see a different error this time, missing initializer and const declaration. If you read through this error, you'll see that it's related to syntax. You need to initialize a const variable with a value. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this episode here, but we made it to through const, and on the next episode, we will continue. So we did exercises one through four. You guys let me know in the comments if you guys like this Code Academy course. So far, I'm going to cross my fingers. It seems to be free. 
So if you guys want to follow along, go ahead and do that. But let me know what you think, and I will see you guys on the next one. Thanks for hanging out. Bye.